We here at Artsy Window had the pleasure of visiting a dope space called Flower Shop Collective. Flower Shop Collective is an art and fabrication studio that cultivates the ideas of emerging artists working towards more equitable futures. Their goal is to help artists of all skill levels execute their ideas, learn new techniques, and have a safe space to do so, with a prioritization on immigrant artists, artists of color, and women identifying artists. También les ofrecen todos estos servicios en español. For more information, head to flowershopcollective.com or flowershopcollective on Instagram. Go check them out. So welcome to AW Classroom. Today, I'm so excited because the AW intern, Abe Centeno, interviewed photographer Sophie Vasquez. But before we get into the episode, I do want to introduce Abe. So Abe, can you introduce yourself and tell us how, you know, what you talked about in the interview with Sophie? Hi, my name is Abe Centeno. My pronouns are they, them. And essentially, I spoke with Sophie not too long ago, and we learned more about her past and what triggered her love for photography, and more specifically, her love for wrestling, which we got really in-depth about in our interview. All right, cool. So let's get into the episode. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Abe Centeno. And I am an intern at Artsy Window. I want to say welcome to the AW Classroom Podcast, where we interview young artists, creators, movers, shakers, and magical beings in the art world. Today, I'm here with Sophie Vasquez. Uh, Sophie, thanks for being here. What are Hi. your titles? <laughs> like, are you a lover, caretaker, all those things? I'm a lover, I guess. <laughs> I've never asked <heard laughs> that question before. Yeah. It's like it's pretty much just open minded. Like say say your title is like whatever. Um, what do you consider yourself? I consider myself I'm having like a great <laughs> like I consider myself a lover. I'm a very loving person. Um well, hi, my name is Sophie Vasquez. Uh I'm twenty two. I'm an Ecuadorian documentary photographer from the Bronx. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Um I'm a lover. I'm <laughs> it's kind of like how I'm a I'm a lover of things. I'm a lover of people. I'm a lover of food. So I just gen- I just generally <laughs> with my two bagels that I have by my side right here. I um and I'm a lover of art and photography. I think that's a great segue. <laughs> okay. So to start off the interview, I have to ask you, what sparked your journey with photography? Um, so ironically, my Instagram handle is Bulls in the Bronx because of my love for bands like Pierce the Veil and All Time Low. And as 16, as a 16 year old, 17 year old, I was really into, um, the scene, but the more, the journalist side of it or the photo side of it. So I used to collect the alternative press magazines, only real ones remember the alternative press magazines. And I would rip the posters out and pat, plaster it on my wall. And I would read interviews with like my favorite bands and everything. And that's sort of where I, when I got a camera f- for my high school graduation, that's where I was like, oh shit, like I want to do this. Like I want to be my own alternative press. I want to be my own powerhouse that can go to concerts and do all these things and accomplish that and at 16 remarkably I, I still don't believe it I actually did start my own zine called tear in the radio with me and my best friend where we were just going to these really independent shows in New Jersey and New York none of these bands exist anymore but it was just sort of like these the college band era and I was just like the 16 year old, just like trying to be like my own journalist, like asking questions, like I would do the research and everything. And now one of the, I kind of didn't like doing journalism as much in terms of writing. I realized I like doing more photography and from 16 to 19, 
I was my I was a DIY concert photographer. I was very fortunate enough to sneak into a lot of shows with my camera, get some very un a lot of unpaid internships, and write a little bit, like writing music reviews on my favorite band or my favorite concert that I had saw that weekend. And gradually, I kind of fell into the PR business and I didn't like it. It was too business for me. And I was like, my art's not beginning to feel like art anymore. It's beginning to feel more fabricated and commercial. And this is like at 17, 18. So at a very young age, I had this very, I had a sense of what I wanted my art to be. and. I started doing research about like Bronx photography. I wanted to do research on like the history of old New York through photographs. And I found out about hydropunk and I found out about Monica Flores and Roy Bison and Abigail Montes, who I just hit up on an email just saying like, Hey, I'm this Bronx photographer. I'm really doing research on other photographers in the Bronx. At that time, I was in community college, and I just shifted from liberal arts to photography. And I met Roy Bison at Soundview Park, because we both at the time, well, we still live in Soundview together. And Roy told me, hey, have you ever heard about ICP at the Point? And I was like, no, I don't know what ICP at the Point is. And it was after school program for students under the age of 18 to learn free photography, black and white film photography. And I was one month shy of turning 19 when I applied and they let me in and I was introduced to a whole new era of photography where I was introduced to works by Joseph Rodriguez, Gordon Parks, Diane Arbus, while learning a new medium of like film photography and actually learning what ISO aperture and um, shutter speed was because I was just shooting on automatic and really just hoping for the best. Um, and that program nurtured me. I was a lot of my mentors, uh, Miranda Barnes is, was one of them. She was a TA at the time. And I turned 19 and then ICP at the point was like, you know, technically you can't come back because you're an adult, but we'll let you have another program. We think you have some talent. And I was like, really? Like, thanks guys. <laughs> And we did it, and I kind of was experimenting with self-portraiture, documentary work. I was photographing the Bronx more often, my neighborhood in particular. At that, I think during, like, the time, we did a field trip to the Bronx Documentary Center, which I never heard of before. And, like, it's now it's very a full-circle moment to be working there now. But being in a space in a, in a gallery and museum that was made for photography was just so astounding to me in the Bronx because I had grown up with those negative connotations. Like if you want to be successful, you have to get out of the Bronx or the Bronx holds nothing. Like that was really, that is like, that really was like embedded in my head since like day one. But I, I, I particularly felt like with the Bronx artists, we all dealt with that sort of decolonizing your mind about, hating the Bronx or accepting like the artists that are here in the Bronx. And when I finished that class, I became a TA for ICP at the point. My studies had picked up and then I was the first class for the ICP fellowship, which for alumni of the community programs. And that was, and, it, and honestly, like it was basically an MFA program, but I was doing it as an undergraduate. Um, and that's where I started my Bronx wrestling series, which I, which kind of put me on the map, I guess. <laughs> I feel like that was the body of work where um, before I was just kind of photographing just everyday little aspects, but I never had a project. And then Bronx wrestling um, happened and really like to, to quote like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, like turned my life upside down. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have a lot of content. You're going to have a lot of... Yeah, it's a lot of content already. So the follow-up with your last sentence, what made you so interested in documenting the underground wrestling scene in the Bronx? Um, so growing up, my grandpa... And my grandfather to this day just watches WWE. And now he watches AEW, which if you don't know, is like the newest promotion on TV with wrestling. 
And wrestling was always in the forefront of my mind because my grandpa just watches it, but I never really got into it until like I was 15. And are you familiar with like wrestling a little bit? Like, do you know any of the... When I was younger, I did have a wrestling phase. I used to like collect the figures and all that. But... Dean Ambrose. We know who Dean Ambrose is. Yes, of course. <laughs> I remembered because I was like, let me, I said, we're fans. We can talk to like fan to fan. Um, I remember walking in, seeing Seth betray the shield. And I was like, what's going on? Because I knew what the shield was because I saw them, you know, Sierra, Hotel, India, Echo, Lima, Delta, Shield. And I remember like sitting down, like, what's going on here? <laughs> And I was just like enthralled by it. Like I, that's where like my wrestling phase just kicked off where I was, I think after that moment, I was, I never missed one Raw or SmackDown. I would tell, like we were out late. I was talking, told my mom, it's Monday. I need to get home. I need to watch Raw. I need to know what happens. I need to know what happens like to, you know, Dolph Ziggler or Brie Bella. And, and at that time, NXT was like the current roster, like Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Sasha Banks, Alexa Bliss. And that was like my height. Like that's when I got really into it. But, and then because I had was, because I was a huge fan of Dean Ambrose as a teenage girl, you just Google them. And then I find out about the Indies and I find out about John Moxley, who's his old persona before he went to Indy, before he went to WWE. And generally many people don't believe me when I say this, I believe that independent wrestling shows solely existed in the Midwest, like in Ohio. So my, so you can imagine my surprise when I find out there's an entire New York scene of independent wrestling that goes back to like Homicide, Low Key, Amazing Red, or like on TNA, which I think is now Impact. But the way I found out about this was, um, it really was, I, I really consider it was a moment of chance because I don't think I ever Googled it. I really used to hang out at the Bronx Native shop. This is like, right, this is 2018. So Bronx Native had just debuted like the year before. And like, I remember like every Bronx creative was hanging out there um, because that was the place to get clout. Like, I mean, let's call the thing a thing. That's really what, what it was like. I know Bronx Native has had its fair of um, mixed reviews, and I totally understand both sides. But if you were a Bronx artist hustling, you used to hang out at Bronx Native. And I used I knew Roslyn pretty well um, when I was meeting her for the first time. And I'm hanging out with her, and these two grown men walk in, and they're like, oh, where's Amadis? We want to film a promo and you know we got a wrestling show this saturday and i'm like eavesdropping i'm like a wrestling show like and i and i say a lot i'm like excuse me did you say like a wrestling show like a wwe wrestling show he's like yeah he's like right here on daro's extreme fitness i'm like where's that he's like on whitlock i live on the sixth train for those who don't know so whitlock is like two three stops away from me and i'm just like word He's like, yeah, he's like, there's wrestling everywhere. I said, there's wrestling in the Bronx? He's like, there's wrestling everywhere. And I'm like, really? And the abridged version is that I was, they were just like, just show up and like, you know, we'll let you in if you're with Bronx Native. And Bronx Native, <laughs> I got there really early, but Bronx Native was really just going to show up for like two hours later, be like, hey, we're Bronx Native, and then leave. But when I showed up early, one of the wrestlers recognized me and he and I told him, I said, oh, I'll just shoot in the back. He's like, no, go ringside. And he just like gently just shoves me to the squared circle of ringside. And I saw a lot of talent. MV Young, before he is what he is now. I think I saw Homicide, Dan Moff, Steve Mack, Pinky Sanchez. There was a lot of like New York talent. And then... After that happened, it's sort of like I did. I found out later on that promotion had died. Like it, it just collapsed. Like they all hated each other, and they just were like, "We're breaking up." But then at, again, at Bronx Native, I met another guy who was a promoter at another promotion for wrestling in the Bronx, where he was promoting at St. Helena's in Parkchester, 
and I can say because I don't think they're ever going to host wrestling shows there again. And he's like, oh, yeah, Jack Swagger from WWE is going to be there. And I'm like, Jack Swagger from the WWE is going to be performing in a freaking Catholic church in the middle of Parkchester? He's like, yeah, for like 20 bucks. I was like, yo. And I went and I totally finessed my way in there. You just had your camera. And I and I just remember, I remember it so vividly, honestly, like the fear of like, what's going on? And who am I? And who are these people? And there was wrestlers I met who would travel from South Carolina to go to the Bronx. So they actually had a fan base in the Bronx. And that kind of kickstarted I would consider October 2018 as like my debut where like I started doing this consistently because then I met one of my friends who are now one of my closest friends, Naomi, she's a wrestler as well, who told me come back to BWF, which is the only Bronx wrestling school in New York, like in the Bronx. And for a year straight, I just photographed those two promotions and I, and I photographed there really consistently. Like, and I don't think I ever missed a show. I think I missed one show. And it was because I was not in the state, (laughs) like, you know, like it was extreme circumstances because the venues were like 10, 15 minutes away from my house. And at the time I was with ICP, I was working on a project and I was doing this work on Bronx wrestling. It was sort of like this underground subculture of professional wrestling, but pertained to the South Bronx. So whether that meant it was the talent was from the South Bronx or the fans were from the South Bronx, the space was, it was just supposed to, it was just supposed to show like another gem to the Bronx. Like that's how I considered the project. It was like the Bronx were renowned for our hip hop and our music and, you know, all different aspects of life. But I was like, let me highlight the wrestling aspect of it. And also, um, not many people notice, but like the Bronx wrestling scene is not seen with like any regard. It's just, it's like, because there's other schools like Johnny Rods in Brooklyn, there's House of Glory um, in Queens who like bring in people like Ric Flair or the Young Bucks. And then it's, we're the Shindies and we're like, hey, like we brought this one guy who was really popular in Jersey, like in 2007. Like it really was, like it was really like for the underdogs um, project. And I did that, I would say from October, 2018 to March, 2020, right before the global panorama happened. That's when I, the Bronx wrestling project began and ended. Uh, And I say ended because I don't think the it's ever coming back. New York wrestling is kind of dead right now, with the exception of like certain promotions and certain people that I know. But I consider like a close, like that's like my only project. Where I'm like, this baby's done. <laughs> like I was like, this is a closed project because there's, I think I shot the most that I could ever shoot. And that because now I'm really focused on traveling across the States and really all over the world if I can to continue to document wrestling. So it's kind of crazy to think like it started like right in my neighborhood. And now I'm almost every weekend I I go to like a different state. Like it's kind of crazy. It's it's like a rock star life with no money. (laughs) Because I'm not making that money. So yeah, that was, that's kind of how, so long, I'm telling you, I'm giving you so much content. I'm so sorry. Please interrupt me if I start rambling, but like, I'm just giving you like the full story, but I want you to ramble. <laughs> yeah, like, like this is really the most ex- the uh, d- detailed account of it. But long story short, Grandpa liked wrestling. I like wrestling. Chance encounter. Here we are. <laughs> that's, that's the abridged version. The, it's funny that you mentioned like how you said that the Bronx um, wrestling scene is like very underrepresented. And like today, I was like in a meeting with uh, one of my professors. And she mentioned, like, she heard about the Bronx wrestling scene through the 40-year-old virgin. Oh, <laughs> Yeah. I'm just like, whoa, that movie out of all places? I'm like, okay, kudos to you. <laughs> I seen that movie. You seen it? I don't think I have. Now I have to watch seen- it. <gasps> you have to watch it. It's a good movie. It's, um, what's his name? I know Steve Carell. And- yes, yeah. They have Paul Rudd in there too. Paul Rudd's in it. I'll probably love Paul Rudd. I love Paul Rudd. <laughs> <Yeah>. um. <laughs> so my next question for you is, 
what do you do at the Bronx Documentary Center? I'm currently an assistant teaching artist. So the teaching artists in my class are John Santiago and John Santiago and Jess Kirkham, who um, are great, wonderful people as much as they are wonderful artists. Ironically, before I was working at Infoco Inc., and I was archiving John's work because he was a, a winner and I knew of Jess from Brio. So I kind of always admired their work from afar. And now that like they're my friends and coworkers, it's a very nice dynamic. But we teach um, high school students on um, photography, not pers- a little bit of intro to photography, but as well as developing our own stories. So it's been a challenge so far doing everything on Zoom. I can't because really I'm teaching them what I was taught at ICP at the point and I can't even imagine doing that on on a camera like on, on zoom because at the point we had the dark room we had our own space we were learning how to print we were learning how to do everything so we're doing the best we can it's and it's, the kids are great they have a digital camera and they're able to um pursue projects as much as they can safely because obviously we don't want to encourage the kids to you know what their parents are comfortable with like if their kids like you know going around their neighborhood and stuff because before it was a very much of a class where it's like oh we encourage you like go do neighborhood walks go photograph strangers now we're kind of like uh, like not so much because we don't want to be responsible for like telling a kid oh yeah do this and then they could have potentially hurt themselves or put themselves like in harm's way like if they meet if there's someone who who coughs on them or if they're not wearing their masks like we there's just so many variables now that the best that we can um try to do is just like to continue to inspire the kids through different art form art forms and different artwork and be there for them where they trying to convey like different projects but i it's It's very interesting, though, to teach. This is my first time teaching this as well. But so doing it on Zoom is a unique challenge. It's not impossible, but it definitely, I really wish I could be in um, the BDC with, like, the lab and everyone. So I want to talk about your recent exhibition with Photoville. Could you let us know more about that? (laughs) Yeah, I found out about Photoville, actually, in my second year community college I didn't know it existed I generally didn't know it existed until my photo teacher shout out to Elizabeth Towery um she told me about it and I went Photoville 2019 and I fell in love with it in Dumbo the cabinet and I genuinely was like oh I want Photoville to be a goal of mine in like 10 years then the applications opened and I was very skeptical. I really was like, they're probably are aiming to do a lot of work that's COVID central. And I submitted my Bronx wrestling stuff because I already had worked on edits, like exhibition proposals, because prior to the pandemic, I was submitting to like proposals on the daily. Uh, I loved trying to submit all of my work because I loved galleries. I loved going to galleries. I always loved going to Rainbow like the day before and be like, all right, we find an outfit for the exhibition. Um, and then I found, I had that edit ready and I submitted it to Photoville. And then Photoville, to this day I'm very but they accepted it and I got a solo exhibition out of it because some of it was group exhibitions And for the Bronx, it was myself and ICP at the point, which was another full circle moment. And I was able to showcase my Bronx work. And I chose Soundview Park because I am from Soundview. And Soundview is very close to Daros, which is where the Bronx Wrestling Federation School is and where I was shooting all the work from. So I wanted it to be close to the community. I know we were talking about like, other locations in the Bronx, but I was like, I was, I think Soundview was the best one because it was just so close to the people who were involved with it. So I think, I don't know if it's down yet. I think this might be the last week. It got, gratefully got extended. I was very fortunate. It got extended um, because it was supposed to close in November, but it closed. It, It got extended. And I think it's last week is this week. I think so. So 
uh, it was a, it was a really great time. I got a lot of recognition. I said, we all love some recognition and validation. Um, a lot of news reporters really liked it. And I was, and that was really just surprising to me because I really thought it was like a niche body of work that not many people would like or niche. It's niche. It's niche. It's niche. I dropped out of college. So this is why, <laughs> no. um, I actually did drop out of college. She's in a different kind of school now. I'm in, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, <laughs> we're in, the, we're in the arts. This is the, this is the real art school. Oh yeah, wait, this is I, real. I resonate highly with your energy right now. That's my thoughts <laughs> in college. I mean, this is a collective that's really art school part 2.0 where it's like artists yeah. just like, says <laughs> F, but, um, yeah, so Bronx Wrestling was the thing with Photoville, and it was really great. It was it was a humbling moment. It was a very surreal moment. I never – a lot of these things are crazy because, like, I genuinely am like, oh, like, this might happen, but, like, when I'm 29. So it happening at, like – I was 21 at the time because I turned 22 in November. I was like, oh, shit, like, this is, this is pretty legit. Like, not that bad. <laughs> So I was like, I think I'm a pretty okay artist. I was like, I guess people like it enough where I'm like, um, everyone thinks like this is like an act or I'm just like, I'm like, no, like I'm just genuinely shocked. Like, I'm just like, oh, you guys actually like my stuff. Like, it's a very, um, that's, I'm always just a nervous, I'm always nervous with my artwork. So when people like it, I was like, oh my God, thank you. I, I did not expect this. <laughs> so we're nearing the end of this interview. Um, I do have one more question to ask you, but I'm not sure you're going to have enough time to answer it in two minutes. I, I can time myself. <laughs> okay. I ran so, a lot by <laughs> What advice do you have for photographers who are underrepresented? A lot of people are not going to accept your artwork. There was a lot of people who, at the beginning of Bronx Wrestling, was like, you should give this up. It's not going anywhere. And I, it really is trusting your gut, trusting your intuition, and kind of just doing your own thing because the art world is very picky. It's very selective. And I always firmly believe in the belief of like, you know, if a door closes on, you just kick it down. <laughs> like I, very, I, I firmly believe like never take no as an answer, go about things like respectfully. Cause I also believe that in this industry, it's always who, you know, we never, no one wants to admit it, but it really is. So it's like, you go about things respectfully, but at the same time, don't be taken for a fool. So it's like, you know, I'm gonna respect the space here, but like, if I wanna do this, like, I'm gonna, like, like a lot of the stuff I accomplished in wrestling post Bronx is I just showed up. Cause I, they were like, oh, you weren't invited here. I was like, well, I invited myself and I ain't hurting you, nobody. <laughs> so I'm just like, so I ain't hurting nobody. We're good. And I think that's kind of, the mentality I, I try to push, I think is to have, is just to be like, I'm here. I ain't hurting nobody. We're going to have a good time. Let's rock with it. And for a lot of underrepresented artists, make your own waves. Don't like, if you have something you're passionate about and if someone's like, you should change it. But you're like, nah, this is what I want. Like go with it. Like don't feel compelled to change your vision. If you're really, if you're really passionate about it. like, don't, um and don't be afraid to like kick doors down like if a door closes you can break the hinges like it's a very you know i i think and i also think another 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 thing is like i also feel like as poc artists we kind of have this thing where it's like oh well i don't want to ruffle any feathers because i don't want to lose this opportunity when there really has been a lot of like white male artists who do that shit, like they kick doors down because they want to. Everyone's like, oh my God, like you're so brave. But like, if I did it, it's like, oh, like, why are you doing that? Like, shouldn't you be grateful for this and that? And I think because the art world is very cruel. Cool, so I think if we just continue to just like play that game of like, I'll kick this door down. Like, don't, my foot's high enough. I can do this. I think that can really push for a lot of, uh, underrepresented artists to get that representation that they very, very, very much deserve. So kick that door down. Sophie. 
thank you for coming on to AW Classroom.